Here's the original, which was released in the 50s. Here is this, which was done more recently. There's this. There's this. Again. The old one is on this side. The newer one is on that side. Another record label that is known for their distinct look is a European record label called ECM Records, and that's the topic of the next link. They've actually had two books published uh, about their record covers, and again, for a lot of the people that um, are fans of that music, they're also giant fans of the covers as well. Now, someone made the statement before that maybe the minimalistic cover uh, has something to do with the kind of music. And that wasn't necessarily the case for the Beatles record, but definitely these, uh, this music is very uh, reflective, I would say, and very much uh, contemplative and, and simple. And that's why I think, in this case, the kind of font that was chosen and the look of these covers is an accurate reflection of it. They also, uh, they also, interestingly, have pictures that don't necessarily always have anything to do with the, uh, with the, with the topic of it. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> There's a case of some handwritten typography. And so on. The last one, the last example, given that I, I blew away the fourth example, is, I know which one I believe it. Um, again, this is a design inspiration of 40 years of type, or 50 years of typography and album covers. And they go through over time. You could almost, just by looking at the typography, have a pretty reasonable guess. Here, by the way, is, I'm not sure if it was the record that came out immediately before the Beatles White Album, but it was pretty quick before. It might have been either the one immediately previous or, or maybe the one before that. Where, again, they take sort of the opposite of a minimalist approach. Who could forget the Captain and Tennille? Mm -hmm. What year do you think this record came out? 70s. 70s. You can just look at the type and know that. Um, I'm not sure, but I would bet that it was. Album was released in 1976. There's an interesting cover. That's sort of the opposite of the Beatles cover, where, or, or, or maybe a kindred spirit, maybe not opposite, where there's a lot of text, and, it, and just the fact that there's a lot of words here gets your attention. I want to read it just because I suspect it's going to be kind of annoying, and I want to read it to be annoyed by it. All right? They did a... a for the, for the longest time, they always had their logo done in slightly different <coughs> ways on their album covers. Here's one of them, here's another, and so on. All right, where does that leave us? What are, what are, what are sort of the takeaways that, that I, uh, I want you to have from, from this discussion? The takeaways I want you to have from this discussion are, first of all, shoot for precise communication instead of just adequate communication. All right? That's 
what this example in here I think illustrated. You know, where they changed the picture, they changed the text to communicate what they wanted to communicate very precisely instead of the adequate generic picture of the guy with the generic text above it. So shoot for precision, I guess, is the, is, is the first takeaway that I'd have. Um, don't just, you know, say, well, that's good enough. Try to make it very precise and very communicative. Second takeaway, I would say, is remember that your typography exists with the rest of the stuff on your page or, or whatever you would call it, page, poster, uh, and so on. All right? So keep in mind it is not in a vacuum. All right? It can possibly complement the rest of the stuff, or it can contrast with it. Again, where maybe the type gives a slightly different feel than the photography, and that itself creates sort of an interest. All right? So consider that possibility uh, as well, that your type and your words have to go together. The one thing I would say is if you're ever trying for irony, that is contrasting one meaning with another meaning, be sure that people are going to get it and make sure that people don't simply think that, um, you know, you, you did a poor job communicating. All right? The last thing I would say is I'm not going to back either of the two sides that I talked about in Helvetica. All right? Legibility and expressiveness both have their place, but again, pick and choose your spots. All right? A little of this kind of stuff goes a long way. If you noticed, for example, the Staples logo that they had, the bulk of the letters were in Helvetica, but the P, or one of the letters, L. the L, all right, was done more stylized, like a paper clip or, or whatever. All right? So they picked their spots. All right? They're not going to do everything like that. They're still going to make it readable, but they're going to pick their spots. All right? Remembering a rule that if you emphasize everything, that's effectively the same as emphasizing nothing. Beyond that, decide what tone you want to take. Are the words of your project enough that you just want to communicate them, or will you enhance the message by being a little more uh, expressive with the typography? All right. And again, that can only be really judged on a case-by-case -case business. You will have a different criteria for a business card than you will for a book cover. Or a different criteria for a poster than you would have for a web page. Uh, and so on down the line. With all these things in mind, let's take a look at the posters that you did for the multimedia class. And let's see, we have about 10 minutes of class left. We'll see how many of these we can get through. All right, let's look at the first one. As we're reading this, keep in mind what the purpose of the activity was to do. The purpose of this activity was to design a poster that could be out there on a bulletin board so you know who the audience is, right? The audience are folks like you, people that attend this school. You know sort of the medium. You know how close you pay or do not pay attention to the stuff that's on those boards. So, and the parameters was it need to be on an eight and a half by 11. Let's look at this and let's try to, again, number one, we're all adults here, let's realize that anything that we say as a criticism is meant to be a constructive criticism. And let's view it from both sides. It's, it's unlikely that any of these will be perfect. It's unlikely that any of these will be horrible. All of them are going to have some good qualities and some bad qualities. So let's talk about them both. And remember, don't criticize too hard because yours is going to be up here at some point. All right. This was...
215, multimedia fundamentals. Good, bad, indifferent. It catches your attention. It does catch your attention. The color combination is, is attention getting without being obnoxious. You know, it's not like, you know, crazy colors will give you a headache. But still, it's, it does catch your attention. The text is difficult to read from a distance. The text is difficult to read from this distance, and, and I'm wondering if this would be representative. Um, what's specific about the text is hard to read? Mm, all cap letters. Yeah, I, I, I don't like all caps, um, at least not all caps everywhere. That's one thing. The actual upper and lower case actually helps you sort of read and guides your eye. The font, if we can zoom in a little bit of this, the font having a gradient, I think, makes it a little harder to read. Maybe not. I'm not sure. And this here being sort of a hollow font outline makes it a little hard to read. What about the use of graphics along with this? Do you like or dislike? Okay, like it, but maybe a little hard to identify. I think the graphics are pretty good for this. There, it might be a bit of that the, the problem that was described. Other comments. All right, let's go on to the next one. Comments? This one has a much different feel. It's more Indian Hollywood. Okay. The, the graphics tend to indicate that. Yes. I think it's great. Yes. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was just going to say, I sure hope you don't criticize it too strongly. Or, or, you're, or you'll, you're, you'll, you'll point one part of it out that's good, the part that you did, and maybe another part, well... I do think it's good. I do think it gives a different feel. For lack of a better word, this might be a little less eye-catching than the first, but this might have a little more professional look to it in terms of a, a serious, uh, that kind of thing. The other one might have had a little more of a fun-ish look. This might have a little more uh, of that. It's easier to read. It's probably a little easier to read, so the font is good. Other thoughts? Yes? Um, I think the typography in general is in that each section is emphasized differently, um, but that the picture at the top makes me think of a scene about film. Yeah. yeah. Well, do keep in mind we only had, you know, an hour to do this, and, and I'm sure we just picked some random clip art, you know, without, uh, you know, getting the rest of it done. What I like about this is that um, the font, the, 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 how do I want to say? It's easy to see at a glance at what this is about, and yet there's more detail if I was interested. All right. So that's one big thing I like about the typography about this is that there's there's sort of levels of meaning. I can look at this and say interested in multimedia fundamentals. Nope. And I'm done with it. I don't have to read paragraphs to decide if I'm interested or not. Or I can say yes, I am. Again. Because if you think walking past those, you don't have a lot of time to make your point. All right? Um, I, I, I suppose, I, I didn't really think of that, but I think everyone is convincing me about the, the graphic, that maybe a different graphic up there would be, would be a little better. Other comments, positive or negative? Yeah, I, 
I can't really see either. I, I can't see uh, to the point that I did not know what you were talking about until you <laughs> until you mentioned that. But yeah, I guess there is. Other fundamentals. Nice, nice little gimmicky thing there. Again, but you were very clever about doing that. No, you didn't do that on every single word because that would have, you know, that then again that that would have really uh, dampened the effect. Other comments. All right. Comments? The text is definitely readable. Um, that's one thing I like about it. The font choice is good. The, the contrast is clear. I do like the fact that it highlights each of the uh, each of the um, sections uh, of the class and does that with, um, you know, representative sort of images. All right. Um, the one thing I don't like is I have to read before I have even an idea of what this is about. All right. I mean, I guess I look at those and I get a sense of that, but is this an advertisement for a laptop that does these things? Or is this an, uh, an advertisement for uh, a job that wants someone that has these qualifications or whatever? It would be nice if there was something that just grabbed my attention right off and, and said that without me having to... To, to read through uh, in great detail. Other comments? All right, let's look at one more today, and we will look at the rest on whatever the next time we meet is, Wednesday. Nice colors, easy on the eye, um, good without being distracting, um, good um, contrast with the text, so the text is very readable. Other comments? Yeah, the color's playing good. The gradient is good, too, and if you notice even, as a gradient gets, by gradient I mean where you, you have a color that goes from dark to light. In other words, it starts out like a darkish blue or purple and it gets lighter till down there till it's virtually white. And if you notice, then the text is reversed. Up in the top part where it is darker is, is white text, on the bottom it is the, the darker purple. I might question some of the wording. I'm not sure if we will per se discuss how cell phone graphics work in this class. Um, let's see. Um, I am not, this is more of a personal bias probably than anything. I'm not crazy about cursive fonts. But the one thing I will say is that's used very sparingly here. So this usage of it is good. It is attention getting and I can still read it. So it's readable and all that. I guess that's more of a personal bias for me. All right? Other comments? It's just the headline. It's just the, the, the two words. So 
Um, there's not going to be a, a, an issue with readability, and that's readable enough. It's big enough so that it's readable. And, and so, yeah, so this, this if you're going to use a cursive font, use it like this. All right? But, I, I, again, I, I can't help but say I, I'm not, not big on that. I do like the slam of, of the text, though. I will say that. And maybe in that regard, the, the cursive font would look better even than a, 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 a regular serif or sans serif font. All right. What we will do on Wednesday is we will review the other, uh, however many of them there are, and we will uh, give you an opportunity to redesign them. Now. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do this, but you, you, you'll rework this one form or another. My diabolical mind is thinking of possibilities, what would be the most educational and fun. All right? Okay. We'll see you over in Latin.